Okay, that's good. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Welcome to week three. And today we'll be having our, our career session as usual. I hope you're having a lovely week. This morning, our topic for discussion this morning is developing curiosity and the ability to ask questions. I know a lot of people might be wondering what is the relevance of our technical training and ability to ask good questions. Okay, Morgan, welcome. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I was having a bit of internet connection issue. How are you guys doing? We are all doing good. So, so that's nice. I hope I hope you're all aware of uh, of the Q and A session we'll be having today. I I sent it. I posted it on the uh, careers exercise channel on Slack. So this morning we expected that you should have come through the whole tutorial exercise, and we expect you to. Have prepared uh, a question or two that you will after that you will after the end of this section. But in the meantime, I'll just leave Maureen to walk you through uh, to this uh, agenda, which is developing curiosity and ability to ask good questions. So during during our presentation, if you have any question, you can just type it in the chat box, regardless of whatever question it is. Just type in the chat box, we respond one after the other. Morgan, over to you. Um, so, hi everyone, how you guys doing? How have you been? Welcome to today's tutorial. So, um, this week, uh, the, the exercise is a bit different. It's actually interesting and I hope you guys enjoy and get a hang of it. It's not so hard and you can begin. So it's basically just, actually this is what we are going to go through today. Curiosity, I'm, I'm sure all of you have curiosity. The fact that you guys are here with the train and just having to do such kind of training, machine learning, it actually needs you to be curious because um, I'm sure you guys are finding ways, uh, are finding ways to solve problems and just get a long-term solution to to the problems that you're working on. So with this exercise, we want you guys to be able to have that kind of mentality, you know. Um, this, this life, you have to be curious, you have to be creative, innovative, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, I live close to there. <laughs> So you'll be having a lot of things. So this week we are going to go through importance of asking good questions, how to develop curiosity, asking the right questions, how to ask more questions. So um, there's actually a method, it's called the Q of T method that um, gives you, it actually provides you like, uh, a way in which you can just be able to develop those questions that you'll be asking. It could be probably you want to know more about a type of phone or a certain type of sort software that has been developed. So how can you ask questions? Uh, which we how what way can you go about it? So QFT um, enables you to ask 
uh, more than even 100 questions. It can just help you get around it, okay? So we also have types of questions. We have open-ended and close-ended questions. And we will also go through the emphasis on open-ended questions and just as well as uh, provide you a, a toolkit guide on how exactly you're supposed to do the exercise and submit it. So um, also um, at the end of the exercise, we will be randomly asking you questions, okay? As Sadiq had mentioned earlier on Slack, what today's ex um, today's um, what is this maybe session will be about? Okay, so we have device curiosity, which is being someone who likes to just explore, you know. It can be culturally, it can be socially, it can be even with a physical location. I guess do you know what I mean by say having diversity, curiosity. It can be also being biodiverse, even with um, plants or the sea life. You just want to know more about what is going on around the world. So we also have sensory curiosity. Um, this could be also when, um, I don't know if you guys know about 7D um, movies or theaters. So if you have ever been to such, it's different from just uh, seeing a normal movie because it's seven dimensional. So if you've ever been to such, um, even just going, um, on a roller coaster, if you if you understand what I mean. Going to experience um, a different kind of feel. So that's sensory curiosity. And also we have specific curiosity. Definitely this is, it has to be something that is particular that you want to to know it could be in the field of either science or even what you guys are doing right now. I'm sure most of you will either channel your careers or your training into either web three or whatever it is that you guys. So you channel your curiosity into a specific um, angle or thing that you want to know more about. We also have cognitive curiosity. And I'm sure this is, we all have this, the desire to just know what is going on, something new every day. And it's important to have this uh, cognitive curiosity. It's part of, um, it's actually part of what? It's actually part of your life and your ability to able to be able to harness things if you are not a curious person it will disadvantage you to a lot of things so it's important to have cognitive curiosity because it also it can also mean that your personality is this type or a different type okay so so just to get into a deep dive, asking the right questions. Well, asking the right questions, of course, you're required to focus your question on a specific topic. So when you ask a question, just don't go rambling around words or topics. Just be on the point. Just focus on it. It's better because with that, you will get a specific answer that you'd want. Yeah. So avoid asking rhetorical questions because definitely when you ask a rhetorical question, you won't get the answer. A rhetorical question is a question that is not necessarily, um, you don't need to give out an answer. So that what is a rhetorical question. When I ask, for example, hmm, it can be even sarcastic. 
<laughs> a rhetorical question. Um, asking a follow-up question to clarify information. Of course, you guys know this. If you're not clear on something, it's important to have follow-up questions so that you can dig deeper to what exactly it is that you want to get a better understanding of. Um, constructing your questions in, in such a way that it force, fosters positive relationship. Um, with this, I can say that nobody wants to have uh, someone who is just asking questions that are a negative, that are not um, on the positive side of what you guys want to find out. For example, um, if you want to talk about an apple, for instance, and you want to know where, in which climate an apple grows best, if in which climate an apple can thrive in, you don't go around it, you go ahead of it. This is what I mean. You can ask a question that gives an outcome that is positive to the answer that you want to have, okay? So also try to ask open-ended questions. Um, this is, okay, let's just get into it. So open-ended questions are questions that cannot be answered with a simple yes or no. Um, it also requires the respondent to elaborate their points. So open-ended questions simply means ask a question that best describes what you want to know more about whatever it is that you're asking. So don't ask a question. Um, do you like tea? So the answer is definitely yes or no. So don't ask that. Ask, um, you can rephrase the question. You can say, for example, on a, on a hot day, would you prefer to have tea or soda? So that person would answer, of course, I'd prefer to have soda because on a hot day, I would want something that would cool my body. So that's an answer of an open-ended question. Yeah, so for a closed-ended question, questions that can only be answered by selecting from a limited number of options, of course, usually a multiple choice questions with a single word answer yes or no, or even having a rating scale. Uh, I'm sure most of you guys have encountered such questions. Um, so even when you're asking closed-ended questions, you have to be you have to understand when you give uh, a rating scale it has to be um if the answer that they will give has to be around that rating scale so it can range from uh, agree strongly agree then there's neutral they then there's um disagree then strongly agree so whatever question that you decide to have on a rating scale it has to be understandable, okay? So we also have advantages of open-ended questions. Of course, there's a lot of advantages. It allows us or anyone to have unlimited responses because it can even bring about a discussion and it can make you have a better understanding or a better sense of what you, you want to know or whatever it is that you are digging upon or just making a discovery about. So it also delivers new, often and unexpected insights. Of course, yes, when you have open-ended questions, definitely you know that your discussions are going to be broader. So with this, you will be able to discover that there is more about what you asked. Yeah, because with, of course, closed-ended questions, it's either yes or no, or you have limited access to, to the answers. You have control over the answers that you want. But with open-ended questions, it's quite clear. And of course, it provides more deep detail and it gives a deeper and 
qualitative data. So you can even use it to analyze your data and get the right um, answers that you are looking for. So we have uh, examples of what close-ended questions are and open-ended questions are. So you can just have a look at it. I'm sure most of you went through the exercise and we also had provided this um, We had also provided this so that you can get a better feel or understanding of what we have in today. So even with the first question of this is close ended question example, would you recommend our product or service? It's either a yes or no. But with an open ended question, you can also rephrase, rephrase the question and ask what were the main reasons you chose our products or services? So, um, as you can see, uh, the closed ended question doesn't give you much uh, an opinion. You don't have, um, you cannot extend your opinion. It's either a yes or no answer, but when you go to the side of open ended question, you, you are allowed to extensively explain or even give an example of why we decided to choose the product so basically that is the difference between the two yeah so sadiq okay now let i'll be talking about the qft uh, she has already walked you through the types of questions, be it open-ended or closed-ended, and why your curiosity should lead to asking questions. Obviously, when you're curious, you want to know, you have that desire to know more, and definitely you should be able to ask questions. So while asking questions, it is important that you ask very important, necessary, and open-ended questions. As such, in order for you to be able to ask such direct and relevant question uh, we advise you to employ the question formulation technique which we call the qft and if you look through the slide there's a link embedded under the definition so uh, you can just click the link and you will get uh, insights on what the question formulation technique is all about but in the meantime i want you to understand that the qft is a method is a structured method for generating and improving questions. For instance, you will have read, let's say, uh, you're curious why is such an individual brilliant. So in your head, you'll be like, oh, maybe he reads his book very well, maybe he doesn't sleep, maybe he eats well, maybe he is muted. You just be after having different sort of questions in your head. So listing those questions out. You can approach the QFT method, which 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 uh which follows the pattern of asking as many questions as you ask. So after asking those questions, you don't uh you like you do not stop this to discuss or judge or answer the questions. Like it 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 uh it's a required to continue asking questions. Questions should be coming out from a particular topic you can ask. You can just have like hundreds of questions in your head. Okay, maybe it's good, maybe it's that, maybe it's this. So that way you are, you are, you are able to, your mind is diverse and you're able to come up with a lot of questions. And after you come up with those questions, you need to write down every question exactly as it's stated. The way you're thinking about it, just write it down. So after you've written it down, and you can revisit those questions and rephrase them and make them into improved words. How we have been able to generate a very good, improved, and enhanced questions. I have also embedded the link to this particular page that further describes how the QFT technique works. However, for this for this week's uh, exercise guide. We would like to we would advise you to employ the QFT method. By employing the QFT method, uh, 
uh, you I advise you to just follow the procedures which I have just uh, outlined and you can also go for that to watch the video which I have embedded a link so that way you can be able to ask some questions so for the prompt for the question is you are the second employee to join a fintech startup which offers credit scoring prediction for an Uganda on the basis on the, on the basis of a mobile credit purchase. Your CEO develop a new algorithm as part of our PhD research, and you help our commercialize. Your CEO wants to choose a cloud platform and wants wants to use either the AWS, the C, the GCP, or the Azure. You are to you are, you are preparing for a 30 minute interview where she wants you to make a recommendation. Her goal is to raise investment and exit in the next five years. So now you, I hope you understand the prompt. The prompt says you work for a fintech company, uh, you're developing an algorithm for a PhD research. Uh, the, your boss wants you to choose from a range of, of, of cloud platforms and you're preparing to a 30-minute interview with the goal of to raise investment in the next five years. So now, we are preparing for an interview. We expect you to have a lot of questions in regarding to the subject. So now we expect you to brainstorm at least 30 questions in the QFT meter. We want your curiosity to rise once this topic and you to be able to develop at least 30 questions, whether they are, they are the questions are legit whether the questions are making sense or not, develop at least 30 questions. So after developing those 30 questions, using the QRT method, we require you to move up to those 30 questions and list your top five questions. After listing those top five questions, then we expect you to rephrase these questions, improve them, such that anyone that hears these questions will say, wow, this is an intelligent question, so that the question will make sense anywhere you ask. Additionally, you can write one or two paragraphs of your reflection of questions that you wish you had asked in you know, with one of this training and submit all the above five types in PDF format. So this is basically what we expect you to do for this week's exercise, which I mean, I consider it, we see it as a very simple task. However, it's a very logical one because you need to be very calm while presenting for this core question so that you'll be able to ask the right questions towards, towards this subject. <coughs> However, the submission deadline is on Friday as usual, 8 p.m. UTC. And if you have any further questions, you can just drop it on the Slack channel, on the career Slack channel, or you can reach out to me on my That's what you have for me this week. I hope you do understand. I hope uh, you you comprehend all what has been said. However, we expect that you should have visited this before now. So, uh, if you have any questions, you can just signify by by the raise of your hand. Morgan, do you have anything you want to add? Okay. Okay, two so, slides wants to speak. Yes. Okay. Morning, okay. I think, uh, presentation. My question is about the NFX, what we have to do. I read the contest and uh, I've noticed that uh, uh, it's like I have to prepare a, a 30 minute meeting with my CEO. But about, about the questions, I would like to know if I, if I have to put myself in my CEO shoes to imagine the question that would be asking to me, or I don't really know uh, in which part I should put myself in order to ask those questions. Okay, so I believe this is what you're asking. You are asking how exactly you're supposed to go about in 
preparing questions and where you stand in. So in the exercise, you're prepared, you are provided with a short, um, what can I say? It's like a guideline on what exactly the exercise is all about, the task. So um, as you can see, you are, if you read through this after we have this bullet point, the first bullet point on the exercise guide, we have uh, other bullet points that describe what exactly um, what you're supposed to gather from the questions that you'll be asking. Okay. So if you read through the, is it an article? Whatever it is, it gives you like a uh, it gives you an understanding of where the questions will come from, okay? So you're supposed to generate 30 questions from this um, task using the QFT. So if you go through um, the short article, sorry? No, I don't understand. Okay, okay, let me just chip in a few no, what, my, what, my, what, what my comment is not about uh, using the, the QFT. Okay. okay, I get you, I get you, Josiah. Your question is, um, are you to put yourself in the CEO shoe or the second employee? Basically, what the old scenario is talking about is like, okay, let's assume you have a pizza company, you are like second in command, maybe like the deputy managing director, and the CEO happens to be the boss. Okay, let's assume the CEO, who is the owner of this company, is developing a new system as part of our PhD research. And the CEO wants to choose a new cloud platform for the organization. So, however, the CEO wants you to go into a meeting on Happy Out. Do you understand? She wants you to go into a meeting with her where you need to suggest. Uh, and you need to make recommendations on which of these cloud platforms you should use. However, our goal for this company is that they want to raise investment, which is obviously the goal of every, every company. So now, what uh, is expected of you as the second in command, like the deputy CEO, we want you to brainstorm at least 80 questions and we have to this. These questions should be like, oh, why do we need to do this? What is the relevance to this? Is this better than this? If we use this, what will happen? If we do this, what will happen? Such, we want you to ask such questions. We want your curiosity to rise and ask you. And I need you to ask you such questions. So at the end of, if you got if you just the 30 questions, then we want you to uh, select five questions and you will also include these questions was the set subject. This is what you require. The QFT is there to just uh, guide you towards how you come up with these 30 questions. Because with the QFT, you can ask as many questions as possible. So that's basically all of it. I hope you're clear now, just that. Okay. I think it's a little bit clear, but I, okay. I have my question, I have another question so about, uh, this, the, about actually the topic. Uh, I think that I'm new with those concepts and how am I supposed to formulate a question about them? I think my question will just be about knowing what the, uh, DCP means, I should mean, or AWS, I don't know. We just be, yes. So I don't I don't have any idea about the concepts. So okay, okay, how okay. are supposed to ask the questions? These concepts are cloud platform, uh, they are cloud platforms. However, since you don't know about any of these platforms, maybe that's an opportunity for you to ask the questions. Because let's now, for example, you don't have uh, a good understanding of GSP. That's a good answer. It's where your curiosity should lead you to 
asking yourselves, okay, what is GSP? Let me Google GSP. Let me know about it. So you need it's such curiosity. We want you to uh to channel to us asking good questions. So it's left to you to just go and research about this about this platform. Okay. Yes, sir. Then you were you were asking who are we going to ask these questions in the meeting? No, you are preparing for a 30 minute meeting where she wants you to make a uh, convolution. Okay, so we want you to ask these questions. So it is the questions you have asked yourself that will lead to the recommendation. So this question you are asking yourself and you're asking the organization, oh, why is this platform better than this? Why is this? Why is this? Why is this? So you're just asking yourself, your curiosity is leading you to ask them those questions. It is these questions that will lead to better recommendation. However, we don't need uh, your recommendations. We just want you to be able to ask good questions. I hope that's clear enough. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, your honest, you can speak. Okay, thank you for the presentation. My question is on uh, question formulation techniques. Okay. Uh, uh, one principle is that ask many questions as you can. Why we do not uh, focus on the quality uh, question rather than asking many questions? This is my question. Thank you. Okay, uh, yeah, that's that's a very good question. Uh, let me give you an instance. Assuming uh, you're given a contract to develop uh, an algorithm, for let's okay, let's let's say okay, you are developing. Uh, a surveillance system for Nigeria as a whole. You just want to come to Nigeria and ask relevant questions when you develop the system. I bet you won't get a good outcome for your system. So you need to ask a lot of questions. So it is from that lot of questions you are increasing your chances of getting better questions. Let's say, for example, now you've asked like 50 questions. By the time you sit down to start selecting and Start selecting and looking at this question, you get a lot of relevant questions. You can get like 10 relevant questions. And having getting 10 relevant questions, it increases your chance of, act, of asking more and more relevant questions. So the larger the number of questions you ask, the better the number of relevant few questions you get. I hope you understand. Yeah, can you yeah, can you yeah I got it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, you're welcome. Mt9, I can see you have an opinion in the chat box. Can you just unmute and speak so I can clarify what you mean? Uh yes. Uh, uh, so this is about um, Josiah's question. Before, uh, I think because um, he. If I understood him correctly, that he doesn't know about uh, AWS or these uh, technologies, about these cloud platforms, and I also don't know much about. And uh, his question was: Should we know about these uh, cloud platforms or not before we write our questions? And you should you should know about them. Even if you don't know about them, you can just spare like maybe five to ten minutes because uh, this uh, this is just knowing about them will be beneficial to you, and knowing about them will will, uh, will just will typically uh, make yeah. us understand that you your curiosity is high and you have the ability to learn new things and ask good questions, which is a portion of uh, the assessment of this exercise. So you need to just okay. You don't know what AWS means. So you can just pick up maybe yeah. three minutes and ask and ask yourself what is it and know about it. Then you'll be able to ask yourself how to come up with good questions. Okay. That's 
Okay, I think uh, I understand this. So, uh, can I clarify a little bit about this, or in general? Like, uh, uh, in this scenario, like we have this, uh, uh, the CEO has an algorithm and she wants to um, uh, use some cloud platform to, to commercialize it. Mm -hmm. uh, can you, what are the, like, the most important um, areas to focus on here like in in in, in this kind of um interview let's say it's a it's an interview is it or it's a, a meeting sorry it's a meeting, it's a, it's a meeting. yeah okay. so i suppose a, a meeting will have a particular goal um okay. can you can you clarify what is what well, okay. at least what are the possible areas that this uh, meeting um okay focus on okay the meeting is uh yeah. they have they have this three platform they want to select from and the ceo wants to, to make a recommendation for her and our goal is to rise that investment in the coming years so this uh we are not telling you to go into the meeting and ask questions you understand we want you to before the meeting we want you to sit down and respond for questions and ask yourself, okay, if you are going, if you are making, if you are recommending AWS to your CEO, you need to have asked yourself a few questions why you are going with AWS. Is AWS flexible? Is it, is it, uh, is the scalability okay? Is it good? Uh, is it rigid? Is it this? Is it better than this? How long do we need to keep using it? How, you just need to, Keep asking yourself a lot of questions. So it is these questions we want you to outline and select your top five include questions. Okay. So these are like there are, these questions should happen beforehand. Yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. in the meeting. I okay. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. now it's clearer. Um I don't know if uh, can I ask another question? <laughs> no, you can, sure. Uh, yes. So this QST technique for asking mm. questions. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I read the article that was, uh, um, uh, provided, yes, about it. And it, it seems, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, the examples were given like in classroom and for research, but can you, um, do you think there are areas or particular scenarios that, uh, this technique can be useful for? Okay. This is, this yeah. This is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the application of QFT can be yeah. used beyond the classroom and research. Let's, for instance, maybe you're just curious, you want to, okay, you're going into building of a house. Uh, you have a lot of products you want to use to build your house, and you're curious which one you want to use. You can just sit down with the QFT technique, ask anyone's questions, and come up with a good suggestion. So the QFT technique is in general, you can use it in real world applications. You can just use it generally in every area it is applicable. And as far as you just want to get good questions, following the QFT technique, it's good to go. And you make sure your previous questions you can ask does not have any relevance with the next questions, like does not affect your next questions. That way you'll be able to come up with good questions. I hope you're clear. Yeah, I think I think it's clear. Yes, thank you. Okay, if you have any, if you need any further clarification, you can reach out to me, or you can just watch this video. I have embedded in this yeah. slide. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Melese, that that pronunciation correct? You can mute and speak. Okay. Can Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Good morning. How are you? Uh, how are you? <laughs> okay, I have one question. Uh, okay. We assume uh, that our, our CEO has no idea about the platforms like GCP, AWS, and Azure. Okay. Uh, what's our assumption there? About our yeah. CEO? I'm not sure I got your question, sorry. Okay, what I meant was... Uh, do we assume that our CEO has no idea about Azure, AWS, or GCP? Okay, 
Uh, okay, do you assume your, C, uh, your CEO does not? Yeah, you assume she doesn't have any idea. Then we, we assume you have all the ideas. However, if you do not have the ideas, you can just go up and just take like a five minutes reading about these platforms. That way you'll be able to ask comparable questions and you have enough questions that will lead to suitable co uh, recommendations during the meeting. Okay, this means that we should have uh, questions that before our recommendation, we should have uh, a lot of questions to ask. Yes, you should have a lot of questions to ask on the platform and you should have a lot of questions. You know, definitely, if you have a lot of questions and you'll be able to answer these questions, you can make a recommendation. It's just like okay. uh, like like this session of if I ask all of you questions and from that questions, I can be able to make good recommendation that yes, this person is good, this person is trying, this person is average. You understand? That's how it is. Okay, so the questions should be like uh, about SR grade, SR grade level questions. Like, first we have to provide a somehow a clear understanding for the, our CEO, and after that we ask the questions. I'm yeah. thinking that yeah, that approach in my head. Yes, yes, yes that's, that's, that's it. But uh, in addition, uh, we, if just like what Mtinan asked, uh, she she uh, she asked if if the questions is before the meeting, which I said yes. So you need to have asked yourself these questions before the meeting. So when you go into this meeting, your recommendations will speak for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, before we proceed to the Q and A section, uh, do we have uh, uh, any further questions? Um, just before we go on, I would like just to emphasize what we are required to submit. So, regardless of the scenario, um, remember that in your document uh, file, what you're supposed to have is 30 questions. Then you, out of those 30 questions, you list the top five. Then out of the top five, you make sure that you improve how the questions will be like. And after that, ensure that you write one or two paragraphs on your reflections, uh, on questions that you had wished that you had, had asked in week one. So don't get confused with the scenario where we're having a 30-minute meeting or where either you are a CEO. This is just a scenario that you're providing so that you can be able to have your questions, you know. So don't set up meetings and provide links to them on the document. Yeah, okay? yeah. That's so don't <laughs> get that mixed up. I hope okay. you, get, you all get a better sense of what you're required to submit because it's important to to just know what exactly it is you guys are doing, okay? So, so anyone else with a question? Because we also have questions to ask. Uh, what sure. I mean by week one is when we were when you guys were just uh, getting onboarded i'm sure you had questions in your head and you were not clear about but now that you're in week three and you have a better understanding what questions did you feel like you should have asked that is what we mean okay however i yes. would like to i would like to make a uh, further clarification if you look at the message I sent on the career ch uh, channel, uh, I made mention that the ability to ask questions on this particular session uh, is, is, is part of the assessment for this career exercise because we are also looking to uh, grade your curiosity and your ability to ask questions. So, so far we have, we've asked, we've had just few people who've asked questions like five to six. So we urge you all 
we expect that you might have gone through the tutorial guide before today's session. And you know, obviously, we didn't expect you to have a good clarification of everything. So we want you to use this medium to ask questions that you're not clear about on this tutorial. So it is important to ask questions in this session because uh, questions you ask and your ability to ask questions in this session uh, carries part of your assessment for this exercise. So the floor is open for you to ask questions. Marvin, do you have anything you want to add? Um, no, apart from the fact that in the next five minutes, probably we'll also be asking questions. It's the floor is yours for you guys to just ask any question. And Yeah, we'll be from today until further notice, we'll be having a, a, a section in the careers ex, uh, to, uh, sessions where we'll be picking people uh -huh. randomly and asking questions related to the careers exercise that we've discussed. And this is in regards to the fact that you guys will be finishing the training soon and you'll be out there in the field looking for jobs for those who will be looking for jobs so this is just to make you get better in your interview skills for example when it may be your first interview and you asked a question that you don't understand or don't know so what do you do? Do you just freeze or do you just say, oh, sorry, I didn't quite. So this is just to prep you and so that you get comfortable, so, so that you get into the action, okay? And it, it won't be a hard question. Hello. I, I, okay, I think uh, network was used. Uh, Nathaniel, you have the floor, you can ask me. Okay, I have uh, questions about uh, the week one questions that are um, created uh, that we have to submit about uh, the week one. So are they, are they have to be general or somehow technical or some okay assignment specific? No, no, no. You could just, no, no, no. Uh, we expect you that by the time you have you, you've gone through the QFT technique, you now have a better idea of how to, how to ask this on which we expect you to uh, trace back to the one and ask any questions in which you might have asked them. It might be technical, it might be careers, it might be about 10 academic. Anything you felt you should have asked, you can just include it. Is that clear? Can we, can, can we restructure a, a question that we have already asked? If you require better clarity, you need you to ask questions you wish you have asked, questions you've not asked before. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Door is open. Who's next? We have Naom Abdimaiko. Please unmute. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is on the on the project on the exercise guide. Uh, it says. You are the second employee to join the fintech stand startup, but uh, it doesn't no, specify what. Uh, can't you, you hear me? No, I can hear you. But I didn't get that uh, clearly. Right? Okay, uh, it says uh, you are the second employee to join the fintech startup, 
but mm -hmm. it doesn't specify what my role in the startup companies okay. like uh, am i going to help the ceo uh, build the platform the cloud platform or what is exactly my role okay we assume as soon as the question says you are the second employee to join a fintech company assuming the your, your ceo is the owner of the company the employer you are the second employee which automatically assumes you to be like the deputy ceo or the managing director like you're just like the vice or the deputy like you're like in the second command position so uh this tax requires you to give a recommendation since you're in the second position it is like more like a vice president giving a recommendation to the president so however for you to be able to give good recommendations it is expected that you have asked a lot of questions then for you to be able to make recommendations so this uh this old scenario assumes you to be like the second in command how that's good Okay, that's great. But I have another question. Uh, it says the credit scoring uh, prediction is based in Uganda, but uh, is it uh, related to or it is a government supported or something like that? Because it's, it's which related to... okay. huh? um, You know, uh, this whole scenario. Uh, uh, it's, it's an emergency it's an imaginary scenario it doesn't actually exist so we just came up with an emergency scenario so that we assume you're a second in command so it, it it is left for you to define whether it is a private or a public but as a ceo we expect that it's a private institution so that way we can be able to generate questions better Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now, <coughs> uh, we have uh, uh, Tama Niyom. Tama, can you just speak, please? Niyom, Niyom, Niyom. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my question is just a general question. Uh, before I will, I continue. After the question, I will continue to ask the question that is related to the assignment. So when I was uh, studying about the career uh, development, uh, so I've seen that uh, we are in different categories. We have developers and we have tech evangelists. Yeah. So those tech evangelists are those, are those that uh, help the CEO to to ask questions here are we supposed to be normal developers are we going to be trained as a normal developers or just take evangelists because i see we are everywhere okay, <laughs> you will okay, help okay. me to okay you this. are not you are not you are not a developer you are like okay let's yeah. assume the company is owned by a ceo you assume the position of the deputy CEO. So your own task is just to make a recommendation to the CEO. However, for you to be able to make good recommendations to the CEO, you need to be curious on why and which of these platforms should be developed. However, for you to be able to know which platform is best for your startup company, you need to have asked yourself a lot of questions. So what we need you to do is just basically just go up ask your questions why w why aws is better than cgp why this is better than this if we use this is this cost effective is this better than this you are not the developer is that right mm -hmm. yeah but uh that person will be having a knowledge about the technology yes yeah sure so however if you do okay. not have if you do not have the knowledge you can just spare us like one two minutes just to read about this platform so you can ask mm -hmm. it's your question okay so consider uh concerning regarding the the question about listing five questions eh? and they improve the list of those questions uh we will list them and then list 
uh, improved ones in the same document or yes, how will yes. we do? You have uh, you have a section that requires 30 questions. The 30 questions can be any of the questions can those be any of they can be on they should be on include they should just come nature of them. You mm -hmm. should list the top five uh, questions you ask. Then you can after the top five questions, the English, the grammar, the way the questions appear might not make sense. But you can just sit down the phrase and make it this one make sense. Mm -hmm. okay. You're welcome. Uh, Edessa, Mazere, Edessa, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm here, Robert. Hmm? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. I can. Okay. Uh, what does it mean by QFT technique? Q QFT technique. Uh, is that techniques that give you the chance to ask good questions. Like, okay, we all know how to ask questions, but with QFT, it gives you a chance to generate and improve your questions. Let me give you an instance. The QFT technique follows four basic rules, which is the first one you ask as many questions as you ask. QFT techniques give you the chance to ask as many. You can ask even if it's 50. For this exercise, you can ask 100, as many as you can. However, the QFT technique follows that uh, you shouldn't uh, allow your past questions, the questions you have asked in the past, to affect the questions in the future. Maybe you ask, okay, is A a boy? And in question two, you can still ask, is A a girl? Don't allow your answer in A in question one to so affect question two. That is what QFT technique says. And you write down every question clearly and you change your statement, every statement, you change it into questions. That's what basically QFT is. However, if if you need further questions or uh, clarification, you can just read through this article on QFT or you watch through the video. Uh, I think you're good that way. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, uh, Nathaniel, hello. 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 yeah, I can hear you, Nathaniel. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, I've tried to see the exercise, but I'm a little confused here. What are you trying to teach us here? Uh, I mean, if you're if you're trying to make us job ready, we're gonna be the interviewee, right? Not the interviewer. So, why bother ourselves by creating uh, this amount of questions? I, what's the main point of this exercise? I don't get it. Okay, I. Before I answer your questions, I would like to ask you, have you gone through the tutorial, uh, uh, the tutorial guide? Yes, uh, I've read the tutorial guide and both the slides. Okay, if you go to, through the tutorial guide, you see there's an aspect uh, that is, uh, how do I call it, the application to real life. So, if you go through the application to you, like you understand that during your interview, during the career phase of your, your during the career phase of uh, of your training, when you are trying to become job ready, you can go into an interview, and interview basically is uh, is an interactive section. You don't expect that they will ask you; they will only be asking the questions. You can be going through an interview and you can just expect you to add questions out of nowhere. So we are trying to make you fit for that interview such that uh, when the actual question you just you just don't look uh, you don't look maybe you don't look confused, you just like okay, this is this, this is it. We want your curious to be eye on this. I want you to develop this ability to always ask good questions. This is basically why. Why we are. Uh, but 
I think yeah, you also, also, also uh, this exercise will allow you to develop uh, the, uh, the acts of being curious and the skills of asking questions. Because when you go through an interview, if you don't have the skills of asking questions, they might tell you, do you have any questions for us? And you tell them, no. saying no at a particular time limits your chance. This concept is vital. Uh, it is necessary for navigating through the world work and uh, the personal life so it's a very important way to go able to ask good questions uh however if you successfully pass through the week one to week four week five and when you get to the job in the next place uh, we'll have a lot of more interviews and you see the usefulness of this exercise Uh, Nazareth, you can speak. Is it me? And uh, Josiah, you can just speak. Okay. Right. I, I would like to, I have a, uh, one additional question is about the difference between the improved, improved five question and the, the five question, because what if I think that my top five questions are enough codes and don't have to be improved? Uh, do you know, let me just give you this instance. While you're asking these questions, we expect you to be writing them to really come from your mind, to really come as a result of your curiosity. However, your grammar, your presentation might not be all right since they are coming in short. So we expect you to look for one way or the other to improve it professionally, no matter how little it is. However, if you feel your presence is good enough, you, know, you can just go on and present it. But it is advisable you look for a way. Maybe if your person is your athlete is in your boy, you can just rephrase it and say, Do you think he is a boy? And we have rephrased it and it made it make more sense. So that's basically it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you have anyone else with questions? We see our majority of you will not ask some questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, one Jew, so you permit me, pardon my pronunciation. You can speak. Hello, it's Wangoi. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I had a question about. Uh, okay, uh, I had a question about uh, the Ten X platform. So I've noticed we get comments and um, I feel like on some of the submissions that we make, it would be really useful to get feedback. How would we go about getting feedback? I'm not sure I get your question clearly. Can you just come again? How would we get feedback on the comments that um, are made by the tutors when they mark or when they grade our submissions on 10X, on the 10X platform. Because sometimes you see a comment. comment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you see a comment, then what happens? Uh, yeah, and um, you'd like further clarification. Uh, but then, um, I don't know, responding to the comments on the what is it called on the platform I, I don't think i've gotten a response yet on the platform okay on the 10x platform yes. uh why why it is like that is basically if we drop a comment for you uh the 10x platform maybe that is during the grading when when we are doing the grading however i most times i do not feel this is uh the 10x because i might have done I might have finished the grading. So basically, if you if you get a comment or feedback from me, and you want to further ask, or you want to further get some clarification, you can just you can just reach out to me on Slack saying, "Oh, 
I got a comment on 10x. Can I please do this? Do I need to do this? Then I'll have to go back to 10x, check the comment, check your work, yeah. Give you personalized feedback. Exactly. Okay then. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. You can unmute and speak. Fisher. Uh, can you know the market? No, 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 no. You're not audible enough. Can you just speak? Oh, can't hear me? Can't hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So I just want to add uh, something. Can we know the marking rubric prior to submission? Maybe if we know the how it's going to be graded, we can do a better job. The marking rubric is uh, typically for if you if you go through the uh, your tutorial guide. Right? If you go through it's very well, basically very well. If you go through down, down, maybe towards the last or second to the last page of all tutorial, there's always a rubrics there. However, the rubrics I believe is just to facilitate the grading. So you can have a good submission if you go through the grading uh, rubrics, or you might not have a better understanding of it if you do not read the tutorial guide. So within the tutorial guide, I'm going to pass exemplar list. You will do a good job. However, in every tutorial guide we provide, there's always a rubric. There's always a rubric attached to it. So you can just go there and see it. I think uh, your internet is poor because I'm audible enough. So uh, I might just drop all you a message in the, sh in the chat box. Okay. And Tilen, Tilaya, how are we selecting the top five questions? And I found a going some question. Are we looking for some kind of characteristic of the questions to judge if questions are good or not? No. Uh, it is left to you to to use your ability to define which question is good and which question is best fit the scenario. So it's left to you. So but basically, you can just look through your question and your instinct should tell you Okay, this question is a very good question. This question is, is nice. This question is good. This one is accurate. This one is excellent. And you submit to the best or the uh, most ideal questions. Okay, Zela, Len, you can speak. Hello guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Please speak up. Yeah. The, my question is, uh, do you have to ask about the, the practicality of the algorithm to CEO? What? Do we have to ask our CEO about the practicality of the algorithm? Do you have to? Do you have to ask our CEO about the practicality of the algorithm? The practicality of the algorithm? Yeah. Yeah, you are with your on. I'm not sure about that question. You can just type it in the chat box. OK. Okay, Morgan, you can you can just pick up from where. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, one one G. You can speak. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. It's Wangoi. Okay. <laughs> pardon, <laughs> pardon my pronunciation. Yeah. Um. So just to confirm for this uh, assignment. Uh, we were presenting 30 questions and then a list of five questions and then another, and then another list of five question, questions not and then not necessarily 30, at least, at least it can be more than 30, it can be 40 and the higher the better because if you have more questions, more than 30 questions, we believe your curiosity is high and you have higher chances of scoring better. Okay, so my question is for the week, the writing one to two paragraphs on questions. How many questions should we include there? Like one or two? On all two. Or is it one to two paragraphs? Yeah, as, as, as many as you can in as far as it speaks to one to two paragraphs. But basically we don't expect you to ask much questions. You can just ask, Okay, you were curious and you can if you should have done this, you we can should I have done this or I have a better understanding now. Can I still do it? Can I do it? Yeah. So just ask questions as in as within one to two paragraphs, you're fine. Okay, and um so we can ask questions that have already been answered for us when we had them in week one, because we're in week two. No, but you can ask questions which you feel you have been, you, you can you can better get an answer now. You know then you are still new, you don't understand how the whole setting is. Uh, so you wish you had asked, but you didn't have the chance to ask. But now you can just ask. Um, so you've confused me a bit. I thought we were, um, is it questions we wish we could have asked and then like, an explanation of how we think um, the answer is, like a confirmation of what the answer is now that we're in week two and like you said, we now know a bit more than we did in week one. Is that what the one to two paragraph and yeah. the reflection is supposed to be? Yes, that's what it's supposed to be. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you can you pronounce that your name one more time so I can I can get it right? It's Wangui. Okay, Wangui. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Morgan, you can just take over. I think the time we we, we pass time. We're supposed to have stopped like 15 minutes ago. The section has been very informative. So we are even out of schedule. Okay. So more you can just chip in a in a few then and continue. Okay, so sorry about the the sudden drop off and uh, just internet issues. Uh, General I see you have commented like an apostrophe. Would you like to say something? I'm sorry, sorry, that was a What? No, it was a mistake. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, and Annette, are you, do you still want to say something? I see you have your hand raised. And Annette, are you here with us? Now uh, we can just move on to, we can move on to the oh, next. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you speak up? I'll speak up. Yeah, yeah, the, my mic wasn't working properly. I just came here late, so uh, uh, I have two questions actually. Uh, one is, when will be this, uh, I mean, wh when is the due for this uh, exercise? 
and when will be uh, posted on YouTube. Okay. Why would okay, Friday, September 9th. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, earlier on, before I suddenly dropped off, I was talking about uh, the few questions that we were preparing for you guys. It will be a section just before we end the, the tutorial. We'll be having it every other time we have sessions, but due to time today, we won't have it today. So we'll be randomly picking about just uh, five people uh, in regards to the questions that will be prepared, it will be, of course, related to what we'll be having a discussion about. And it will, the essence of it all is to just prepare you better to have a better um, skill on interview because, you know, of course, when you're being interviewed, you will be asked questions. So just to have you be more comfortable on your answering skills okay so for example if i just call out um that nile and just ask him a question how you will compose yourself and how you will answer that question is also important regardless of the context of your answer you know so having interview skills is also important so that's why we were going to be having that small session in every uh, session we'll be having in the careers exercises, okay? But nothing to worry about. It will just be questions that we have been discussing. For example, like today, I can just uh, randomly ask you, how many tasks are we supposed to um, submit or which format are we supposed to submit or the on the on the google classroom I'll, okay okay so, morgan i i just received a notification on slack channel that the community building section will be uh is about to kick off in the next 10 minutes so i uh, if you have further questions you can just drop it uh in my dm or on the current uh on the careers channel on slack so I think that that will be open today, so you can go all next steps. Sorry, and then it will, we won't be able to take your questions. Please kindly drop it on the careers channel on Slack. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, do have a wonderful week, and we look forward to your submission. Bye.